this um, presentation is to introduce uh, progress notes. That's, that's what we called it. It's, it's activities, really, but progress notes um, in, in Adidas. So we've added a function where case managers can go into the system and they can add a progress note or slash activity, and they have the ability to enter a session note or a note and record um, as many activities on a, on a particular person as you need. The um, end result is, is uh, uh, two reports, two different reports. One report will pull um, information based on uh, start and end date that includes demographic information and how many units of services, of case management services, were provided. The other report is a roll-up report for billing, so um, hopefully we've got some billing folks on the line as well. And this report will summarize all of the units, and it also includes uh, the generalized case management unit spread and you would be able to take this roll-up report and go into the system and manually enter claims. The, um, this is not a replacement for SPES. I want to be very, very, very clear with that because SPES does a lot of, of um, and has a lot of functionality that this does not. And um, we went ahead and we built out a couple of reports and it, you know, we didn't have the budget to do a whole lot. So what we have is what was asked for, and I think it's a good alternative, but it's certainly not SPES. So we just want to make sure that everybody understands we're not going to replicate or duplicate SPES. But we do have um, some basic functionality if someone needs to use the system for progress notes. So the first thing um, that we want to talk about, because it's unique, is the generalized case management. And there's some setup requirements that's going to take place It's necessary in order for the whole system to work um, and to calculate the generalized case man management units. So the first thing that we're going to go over is how you would even go about getting um, generalized case management into the system. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is generalized case management setup. The, uh, the first thing that you're going to have to do, and, and we need this to be the first step that everybody takes if they're going to do um, the, um, use the system for progress notes, is to add a dummy um, record for each case manager for your, um, to log your generalized case management. Uh, I think that this is similar to SPES. I think that everybody has a dummy record that you use. It's just this is in Adidas, and you're going to have to do um, more steps to get the dummy client into the system. So the first thing that you're going to have to do, and some of the um, case managers that, that were here using Adidas prior to the call center, this shouldn't be um, this shouldn't be so unfamiliar as to how to add a new client to the system. Newer case managers may not know how to add a client to the system, but we're going to show you step by step. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on your um, client's tab there, your client's chapter um, from your home page. And when you do that, uh, you're going to get some filters at the top of the screen. The, um, the configuration on my screenshots is a little bit different from the case management and the case management supervisor roles. So when you do, when you click on um, your client chapter, you're not going to see this first last name filter. Um, you're just going to have a last name filter. And it's OK. It's OK if the configuration isn't identical. Um, what, what's important is the information that's noted. Um, and basically, you're going to search the, the database to find this person. Um, note in red the way that we want everyone to set their uh, dummy client up. We want you to use or start off with the last name of general, then hyphen, and the case manager's last name, so your last name. In the example, it's um, general hyphen Rosales. And then you see my first name is Daphne. So each case manager 
should have a client set up this way. The next thing that you're going to do is um, add new client if you don't see a record up here. And no one should have a record, so you're going to add new client. And you're going to come up, you're going to have additional filters. Um, another configuration change that we made is removing this first fund code um, filter. So when you see the, uh, the, the information, you're not going to have to worry about entering a fund code. You're going to go straight to last name. So go ahead and enter all the information as shown. You're going to enter the general hyphen, your last name, your first name. Go ahead and use your date of birth, or you can use a dummy date of birth. It really doesn't matter, but it's a required field, so you need to enter something there. And then the Social Security field, um, enter all nines. You're going to search again. You should get no records. And then you can click Add New. The information is going to feed over into the demographic screen. Okay. The, um, the demographic screen also has some required fields that need to be, um, uh, you need to have information in. You have to have, uh, for instance, uh, gender, residential type. It doesn't matter. Just put something in that field. Um, Social Security number, your Medicaid, you can put an NA for non-applicable. Then you're going to have to do your fund code. Enter an address, and you can use your agency's address. And um, when you enter the county, the, res the region of residence, and the fiscal region, they're going to automatically de default to whatever county is associated to that region. So just go ahead and click um, the default region. And then you're going to save and close that information. When you save and close, it's going to take you to the Open tab. What you need to do here is um, change that pending Open to Adidas to Open. Now, there's a note in here that says that um, you need to change the Open to Adidas date. Um, because that open date can't be, uh, or needs to be, sorry, um, prior to the authorization. You don't have the ability to change the open to Adidas date. That's a read-only field. But I don't think that this is going to be a problem. And we'll talk about authorizations and why, why that's mentioned in just a minute. I don't think this is going to be a problem because I don't think that anybody is going to go in and do notes retrospectively. I could be wrong, and if I am wrong and this becomes a problem, just shoot us an email and we can quickly go in and um, update the Open to Adidas date. So you're just going to switch your Open from Pending to um, Open, and you're going to Save and Close. Now, what I'm pretty sure happens, um, and it's not uh, in a screenshot here, is that you'll get a workflow wizard. And when you get that workflow wizard, it's for program enrollment, you're going to want to close out of it. And you can simply cancel it by clicking the arrow and dropping down and canceling that workflow. And then you close out of the um, page. Once you do that, then you can see your screen as it's shown um, on the presentation. And you're going to click Enrollment. Again, there's some configuration differences. I'm sorry. You're going to click Enrollments and add Enrollments. Um, once you get to that screen, the Enrollment screen, there's a little bit of configuration differences between what we see and what you guys see. Um, you'll do a fund code. There won't be a CO referral date for you to enter, so you don't have to worry about that field. The, um, the provider, you need to identify the provider. Disposition should be open. Your case manager name should automatically default. And um, your enrollment date, which can be today's date, so you can enter that information. Once you have... Um, once you have completed uh, this, this record, that's all you need to do in order to make this record active is have that open enrollment record. 
once you've done that, the fiscal managers of each region, they need to have a list of all of these general um, dummy records sent to them because they have to create an authorization for them. That is different, and it really has no bearing on billing. Um, please don't be worried about that. But in order to make the report work, in order to make this um, economical and to make this work, the, um, the quickest workaround for capturing generalized case management is through an authorization. So once you, all your case managers um, create dummy records, please send a list in, in an Excel spreadsheet with the names and the case numbers. Um, and of course your provider agency name, send that information to your fiscal manager and they will set up authorizations for this fiscal year for generalized case management. Okay, so the next step, once you have the, um, the generalized case management um, dummy record established, um, and you, you're pretty much good to go in terms of the system being able to capture those units. Um, we're going to move on to entering progress notes. Progress notes, I believe, are very similar to SPES in that you can only enter and should only enter one activity or one progress note per session. The system will appear like you could add multiple lines of, of time but you shouldn't. You should have one line of time to one session note in order for everything to work. So just please be cautious of that. All right, so if you're wanting to enter a progress note, um, you go to the progress notes tab, and then at the very top you'll see add prog progress notes. Click add progress notes. And the first thing that you're going to see is a start and end time. And you can see, um, for those of you that, that um, enter claims, this, this looks very similar to the claims, single claim entry. And to be honest, activities and claims are connected in a way in the system. So, um, but this is not going to feed over into billing. There's no link from, from your um, creating your activities or your progress notes here to automatically um, billing. That, there's not a link, and that's why we had to create you reports. So the first thing that you'll see is an activity time or um, start and end time, and you'll want to enter your start time and your end time, and then you're going to add. And it will, uh, once you add, you'll get another line that we don't want more than one line uh, or more than one start and end um, record for, for one activity or progress notes, just one to one. So once you add that line, you can go down and enter the information. If this is generalized, if this is generalized, then you're going to need to create or you're going to need to select an authorization. And only if this is generalized will you need to enter an authorization. If this is not author, if this is regular targeted case management or early intervention, you do not look. You don't have to look for an authorization. So if you're doing generalized, I think that this this is going to show you. If you were doing generalized case management, you would click on the ellipsis button, and you would search for the authorization, and it would look like this. Okay, so, and you can see that it's, um, it actually doesn't tell you what the service is here, and we may or may not be able to configure that so that it does. At any rate, you're going to get one option for general, for that authorization, um, at least right now. We'll try and build in filters so that you're not having to see multiple um, lines of authorization because this will be copied forward and each fiscal year, you'll have an, a, a new authorization for your dummy um, or for your generalized case management. So you select the uh, appropriate authorization line. 
and the authorization number will populate, and that's going to help drive um, the uh, calculations on the reports. The next step is to enter your ac activity details. You're going to have to enter a fund code. You're going to enter your case management agency, worker name, location, and contact type. Location, I, I think that we gave you two choices, 55, um, I think it's office, and 99, which is other. And um, on your contact type drop-down, we included all of, the all of the varying different contacts that was in SPES. So on this example, we enter generalized case management outreach. The third section is the act activity service. And again, you're going to need to go in and search for the service. So you click the ellipsis button. This is like the plan of care where you're going to drop down and you're going to see all the services listed. And you can filter. You can filter service type by case management to get a smaller um, list of services, and you'll select the appropriate service. You can select the uh, generalized case management or the um, correct uh, case management, normal targeted case management. Once you select that service, all the other information is going to populate. You're not going to be able to um, change the unit cost, and the units are going to be based on the time. Now, if you've made a mistake with your time, you can certainly go in and update that time, and the system's going to refresh, and you should see that the units change and the calculation changes. Once you've completed that, um, you can save and close this progress um, or this activity. And the system, once you do that, um, the system is going to, once you save and close, you'll close and you'll see a record. And there's not a screenshot here. It's missing. But it'll close out of this screen and you'll have a one record. If you click on that record, then what it'll do is open, open up and give you the ability to add a session note. So you do have to save and close and click back in to add a session note. And that's, that's not smooth exactly. Um, it does add several more steps, but um, that's the, the way the system works. I don't think that we could uh, configure that to change. Once you add a session note, um, the system is going to ask you to select a session note or select a type. There's only one type. It's the TCM progress note. When you select that, then you'll see um, the second section there where you have a start end time, a date of service, um, a field for case management signature, and progress notes. None of this information is required. The only reason that I configured the system this way and I configured it this way is because um, some case management agencies uh, feel like they have to print all of these out. And we don't have a way to print these out. And we certainly don't have a way to print them out the way SPES did, not right now. Um, we could, in the future, possibly get Harmony to create a report um, that would report like SPES or similar to SPES, but that would cost additional money, and we don't have it right now. So for the purposes of printing, um, there's a start in time that you can put in, date of service, and once you print the, uh, the web page, then you've got a field for signatures, um, case manager signature. If you have no desire to print, then don't worry about those, um, the information because you already have the information um, when, you when you created the initial progress note activity. So it's, it's completely up to the case management agency as to whether they want to enter this information or not. Um, the progress note, though, th this is where everyone uh, would be um, adding their information. So the progress note field gives you the ability to add the information. And uh, I think there's enough room there to meet everybody's needs. So. 
again, if you want to print this, then you go to File and Print, and you'll get a web page. It won't be a nice, uh, pretty PDF or Crystal Report. It will really be just this web page with the ability to put the case manager's signature in that field. Once you're done with your session note, you save and close, and you have a record for that person. Once you've created an activity or a progress note and uh, have either or decided to create a session note or not, the system is going to um, have these records listed, as you see throughout the system, in a grid. If you look at the session note column, you're going to see um, a true or a false. The true indicates whether or not a session note has been created for this record. The false would indicate that a session note has not been created for this record. This record that you see is the actual activity or the progress note uh, that was created with your time um, and your date. The session note is the notes that you entered regarding um, what kind of activities you had occurred for this person. The next slide that I'm going to try and take you to, just one second. The next slide is going to show you how to access the session note. If you have a session note and the session note says true, then if you go to the other end of the record, the flyout menu is what we call it, you'll have three options. You'll have an edit option, edit to the progress note, which is this activity record. You're going to have an activity, or an, I'm sorry, an edit note, which is the, to edit the session note. And you also have the ability to duplicate the progress note. So what you see is the ability to edit the progress note, um, which is the activity record here, and you can also duplicate this progress note or this activity note. And in the middle, you have the ability to edit the session note, which is probably what you'd be more interested in doing. If you don't have a session note and the session, um, the, uh, session note exists as false, then you have four options um, on your flyout menu. You have the ability to add a note. So you can go in on your flyout menu once you've created an activity. You can go back and you, on the flyout menu, you can add a session note and it'll take you to that session note um, screen. You can edit again the uh, progress note or this, this activity record. You can delete this activity record or this progress note or you can duplicate this progress note. So in terms of adding a session note when um, there is not one existing already, the option on the flyout menu, add note, is the quickest way to go um, to create your new session note. The, um, the last thing that we want to go over is how to generate the report. Uh, up to this point, case management has never had reports. You've never had um, access to reports. So what we've done, the first thing that we've done is to configure the system so that you have reports. So now when you go into the system, you'll see client chapter and reports chapter. When you're searching for reports, just like anything else, there's filters in the system. You can select, you can do one of two things. You can enter the uh, filters as they look on the screen. The type is billing, the category is claims, and retrieve. Um, or you could just leave both of those blank and hit retrieve. There's only two reports that are going to be visible right now to the case managers. Although we are working on a couple more reports, and when we get those work ready, we'll probably launch those in your report chapter two. But right now, you only have two. When, once you hit retrieve, you'll see a list of reports. Again, you'll only have two reports. You'll have the targeted case management billing report, and you'll have the demographics report. So when we start talking about reports, now we're talking about billing. Um, and this information is pulled from the activities and the progress notes that have been created earlier. 
If you want to click on the summary report and view um, your summary of units, you can um, click that first report, the billing report. It's the summary report. And what will happen, it will take you to a screen where you would need to enter um, some criteria. Your fund code, of course, is MR. And your start and end dates are important. So the start and end dates are, um, the report's going to pull start and end dates based on those start and end dates that you entered in your activities or progress note session. So if you went in and you added um, activities for 10 people plus generalized um, in the span of or during uh, September on the 15th through the 16th, this report, based on the criteria, the start and end date, would pull that information. Okay? So you're just going to enter uh, criteria as to how, what dates you want to pull into this report. You're going to enter the um, primary case manager from a drop-down. The, um, the way that the progress notes work is the primary um, case manager is assumed to be the, the, per, the open close record. And then it will give you an option to enter another case manager um, name if someone else worked on the record. This is um, hopefully similar to the way SPES worked in that another case manager can work with a person and can enter progress notes on a person. Um, but when we're talking about generalized case management, any kind of case management that um, the primary uh, case manager did will be applicable. If someone as a secondary pri um, case manager worked with a person, any kind of generalized case management would not be um, applied to that particular uh, worker and that record associated to that worker. Okay. The, pro, um, the provider needs to be selected, and then you view the report. And then what you're going to see is a summary report. Basically, it's going to pull down all the direct units that were provided. If you had generalized units, you're not going to see your dummy generalized um, record listed. What you see is, um, two, let's see, what you see here is just one person that we've had to black out their information, their first, last name. Um, so you only see one record. Basically, there was only within this criteria one person, this particular primary case manager only saw one person. And at the same time, this case manager uh, had 351 units of generalized um, services. Now, we know that that really isn't real, um, but that's a, just a just to give you an example of how the, um, the um, report will work. So you'll see to the side um, the direct units. It lists how many general units have been um, provided. Gives you a unit cost. I know that rate's not correct. It is in the live system. And then it's going to do a spread. Um, it's going to spread those generalized case management units across however many direct units you had. And it's going to give you the billable units, which is five, um, 353. So you had two. It, basically, it took all of your generalized units and added two because you only had one client. Then it's going to tell you the billable amount. When you go into the system, again, the system is not going. It's not automatic. Um, it's not like SPES in that it produces a billing file that you can upload, download. You are actually going to have to go directly into the Adidas system to um, enter your claims. You can do it via batch billing, which saves a lot of time. Um, when you're in the system, you won't bill, you won't have to do a unit. The units is automatic. Um, and based on the, I'm sorry, the unit cost, based on the units entered, your uh, billable amount will automatically calculate as well. So um, for the billable amount, this is a good cross check against um, your claims batch billing when you go in to bill for services. And then there's a summary. There's a grand total at the bottom. So that's what the um, summary report looks like. This is an example of, um, this is an example of where we had uh, two case managers working on one person. 
And you can see that there's generalized case management that's been provided. But over to, um, in the generalized share, you'll see a zero. You see a zero because the, the, the um, person that was working with this uh, particular record was not the primary case manager. And so that generalized case management is not going to be spread um, to that particular person. You can see um, also this is an example of how the system is going to take one and break it in half where you're going to have um, a rounding um, issue. It's going to highlight in yellow any kind of rounding um, issues where it's going to take, if I had to split a generalized, one generalized unit in half and I have a 0.5 for each person, what the system is going, going to do is round each generalized unit up so that, so that um, a half becomes a whole for each person. So that's a rounding issue that you may want to go back into your billing system and round down for a person. If you have, um, if you generate a report and you've got this yellow highlight, that's indicating that they have rounded up and they've rounded up for multiple people. And what it's going to do is create additional units that you may want to go in and redistribute or um, roll down instead of, I mean, round down instead of up. So. I think that we discussed this. I'm, I'm sure that we discussed this with some of the folks that we um, used as um, SPES experts. And the indication was that, they, that the rounding has always been an issue and, so, and that that's handled manually. So we're going to continue to allow that to be handled manually. The, um, the other report, just getting back to the other report, which is the demographics report, Basically, it gives you all of the information that was provided um, over here. It's not going to give you any kind of summary. It really is back-end data, and it gives you demographic information. It was a request from another case management agency so that they could get demographic information in a report for their whole caseload. Um, gives you first, last name, date of birth, Medicaid number gives you that kind of demographic information. OK, so that's the end of the, um, the webinar. I wanted to keep it short because these things can be really dry, um, and it's a lot of information. My recommendation is for anyone interested in using um, the progress notes that you go into the test site first and practice there. The test site um, should be available to everyone, and your, your password should work. Your live password should work with your test site. Um, if it doesn't, just contact us. We'll try and set you up with a, um, a usable password. But I think that it would be best to practice before you get into the live site and start adding progress notes. Um, the um, the generalized dummy record that can be you can go ahead and set that up in live. I don't think that that would be a problem. But you just may want to look at the system before you go in and start adding progress notes. Again, we have two people as points of contact. Um, again, Deborah Flory is going to be your contact for early intervention, and her number is area code three three four three five three. 3283. And our ID um, DD users, Deborah Moloch, area code 334-353-5006. I know that there's probably a lot of questions. As you get your questions, um, send, shoot them uh, an email to me or, or to Deborah, and we'll try to answer your questions best we can. Uh, I think that it would be useful, again, to go into test. That way, if you uh, run into problems, then you, you can shoot us a question rather than going into live system. If you have questions about the billing piece, the billing component, um, please get up with your fiscal managers. 
if you need training on how to complete billing or to do the um, claims batch billing for those that are used to uploading and downloading, get up with your fiscal managers. They will be more than happy to provide some training. If there's any questions that the regional offices can't um, answer, then they shoot them up to us and we do the research. So please, um, please be in contact if there's problems. We didn't do uh, any kind of hands-on training because everybody is very well um, trained in how to use Adidas. But if there's something missing, please, please get up with your regional office and we will make sure that everybody gets trained on how to use the system and how to build and how to read the report. So we um, anticipate probably having some questions, but it might be slow. We're not sure how many people are planning on using this system versus um, a revised version of SPES, and we don't know when that product is supposed to be released. So feel free to utilize this if you need to um, until you can get something else or in lieu of something else. We put it out here as um, something for you all to use. It's free, and um, hopefully it will be something very useful. Uh, if you have problems, again, just give us a, a, a call or an email. Thank you, and have a good day.